So there's a nine degree uh, angle here at the center um, of this transition of this uh, aft part of the keel. Uh, I pulled that number off the uh, CAD rendering. Like I said, you can get really accurate measurements off that CAD without having to do uh, any fancy measuring or math. Uh, I've set the depth uh, just by setting the blade on the side here, set the depth of the cut so that it's a little shy of the uh, finish line, so it gives me a little bit of room to fine tune it. So now it's just a matter of uh, running it through and then I can cut uh, the other side of this and get this thing cut to shape. Perfect. So what we've been doing today is we took the uh, angle grinder with an 80 grit flat disc just to knock down the big chunks of squeeze out because it was literally shattering the blades of my power planer. And then we came through with the power planer and just even things up so it's plumb, a nice uh, even working surface so that we could uh, do some layout. I want to do the layout even though, you know, months ago we did our law things and made our patterns. I want to have something that's uh, a fail safe, a double check. So when we have the keel fully assembled and I lay out the patterns, if we don't, if we see a discrepancy, then I can throw up a red flag and say, okay, time out, I gotta reevaluate. So we're gonna take the time to do this. Now, before we could start making any lines though, we had to jack the keel up because per the plans at station number eight, it needs to be eight inches above the baseline. So we just did some jacking and some cribbing to get it up to uh, eight inches above the keel. I'm using my level to go off uh, the baseline of the cradle because it's a little bit forward of this uh, support. And we are perfect eight inches and that's uh, just what we want. Now that's critical because if we did not jack this up and we made all our marks with the keel laying uh, level and the cradle, when we, and then if we went ahead and installed everything and built the boat, when we put it in the water, 
the aft end would sink down and all our frames would be crooked because we built them on a level instead of them being jacked up the eight inches as they're uh, specified in the plan. So this is a critical step. Um, so now that we've got this all set, we can use our CAD rendering to take really accurate measurements to um, measure out all the different stations and the rabbit line and everything. And that's what we're going to go ahead and do. And that's why when you read in George's book when he says you, you don't even you know, have to do lofting anymore with a CAD design because the measurements on here are so accurate, you're not double checking the designer. The computer did that. And you could pull all your measurements off here and not have to loft. Now, George doesn't recommend that, and I wouldn't either. Uh, I think it allows you to understand the plans a little bit better, and if you're an, uh, an amateur like me, you know, that's a, that's a has value in itself. But the patterns will make things easier just to slap them up, lay them out, and be able to, to mark them out. But we'll have a fail safe here, and I think it's worth uh, the effort, and uh, to be honest with you, I think it's going to be fun uh, just to see it. So we'll just go ahead and start measuring things out. So now we're just transferring the marks over to the other side so that tomorrow we can come out here and uh, clean up the other side just like we did this one with the angle grinder and the planer. And then we got to figure out a way how to uh, lay this thing down. Uh, I want to apply a preservative to it. I want to epoxy and fiberglass the bottom. And I want to cut the angle there on the bow, but that's all contingent on us figuring out a way how to lay this thing down without just dropping it. We figure it's about 1,500 pounds right now. Um, and I don't want it to just slam into the, the cradle and you know mess things up. So we've got to figure out a way to how to gently lay it down, but we'll figure it out. Our keel, all these months of laminating up the timbers, seven and a half gallons of resistor and all. And now we can see it what it's supposed to look like full size. 
Obviously, we still got some fine tuning to do before we can glue it and bolt it in position, but now we can see what it looks like in real life instead of just the pictures from the plans. And uh, it's huge. It's really, really cool. Um, it was a rough weekend. Uh, angle grinding and cleaning both sides of the field to get things dressed up. Uh, it was hard work. I was dreading it, and it was well-found dread because it, uh, it was a miserable experience. But it's done. The stations are laid out. Things look good. We're making progress, and that's the goal. Um, we're on Instagram now. If you uh, search Sea Dreamer Project, it'll uh, pop right up, and you can follow along. We'll post pictures as we work in real time on our work days. And also, I want to let you know that we earned our first $100 on Google Ads. 95% um, of that came from the YouTube videos, so we uh, do appreciate your support. Um, it took us about 10 months to earn that 100 bucks, so it's not the most lucrative uh, business model, but we'll take what we can get. So, as always, we appreciate you being here. Like, subscribe, and share. We'll see you next time.